worms, different types of worms. I'm going to use a sprout hook. S P R O A T. That will be part of the quiz. <laughs> Got to spell it right. Um, and this is a sprout hook. A sprout hook is just like a bait holder hook. So you go in the salt water and you go down to big fish tackle and you say, oh, I need a, I need a hook for the surf that I can put a worm on or something long. And they're going to sell you a bait holder hook. Well, what makes this different than a bait holder hook is with a bait holder, which is just like this, has a long <laughs> shaft, it's got a couple of barbs on there to hold your bait up. On a bait holder hook, it's like they got pliers on this side, they put <coughs> pliers on this side, they turn it in opposite directions, and the tip of the hook is offset from the eye of the hook. In other words, there's a little turn in the hook. You never want that in the stroke. Because anytime you have a turn in the hook, when you pull your bait up on that hook, your bait now has a little turn in it. So if your bait is coming back to shore like this, spinning in a circle, that's completely unnatural. And of course, when you cast out, it's not like in the lake, like you go down the lake and you cast out your maps and you're reeling it in and you can see it like 100 yards away. You can tell how deep it is, if it's tangled, if it's spinning right and all that. And the surf, you can't see that. It's all jumbled and all that. So you don't know that it's spinning to shore like that. And it's really important that you do that because small surf perch, they will eat anything. They see something spinning like that, no problem. They go right after that because they have nothing else to eat. But the big fish got big by being smart. And the thing about the big fish is that they're looking for something that's coming out of the bottom. So let's say it's a, it's a worm or sand crab that's moving almost like a snake to shore, like this, coming this way to shore, rather than spinning in a circle like this. So if a bait comes toward shore like that and all the small fish go toward it, all the big fish just sit back and say, oh my gosh, that's how Bob got it. <laughs> they know that. that's unnatural. They know that this is like that. So that's the different styles of hooks that we use. Um, that's the rigging setup that we use, um, the Carolina rig from Alabama. Does anybody have a question at all about the rigs? Uh -huh. How do you hook the ghost on that's Surf Fishing 102, and that's in the second hour. How do you hook a ghost shrimp on that? Well, I didn't bring any, any ghost shrimp with me, but I'm going to give you a real quick overview because that's a good question. Most people who fish with ghost shrimp do it once or twice, and they, and they don't do it again. And the reason for that, and, and that's how I probably lost my hair. I, I was thinking that the last time I came, I had hair. I don't know, it's been a while. But when you, when you put on a ghost shrimp, right? And a ghost shrimp in a ghost shrimp in, in the surf, it is like a it's like a uh, live squid under a kelp patty. I mean, it's like the candy bait of the surf. But the problem with it is it's very very soft, except for one part of its body, its carapace. So if you don't hook it correctly, when you go to cast it out, your sinker goes over there, and your ghost shrimp goes over there, right? And has that happened to you before? Okay, so you know. So that is that drives you crazy. So you get one of these long chain hooks, these spro hooks, right? I think that was question seven on the test. This, this is a ghost shrimp that somebody in Texas made and sent to me. Um, and of course, we found ghost shrimp all over the world. I found them in, in Brazil, Canada, all over Mexico, Mag Bay. I found one in Mag Bay that was about the size of a lobster. They're fantastic baits. But the trick to hooking them is taking your hook and going right down the center of the body and then popping the hook out between the legs. So you'll find in the center of their body on the bottom is where their legs are. That's their carapace area. That's the hardest part. And if you start through their tail, their tail is just like a little lobster tail. Just take the hook and feed it through the very tip of their tail, through the center of their body, about right in the middle of their body is where their guts are, and then past that is where their legs are and just exit the hook where the legs are, it'll be in the strongest part of them, and you can give it a nice hard cast. You certainly can't cast it as hard as a, as a crocodile, let's say, um, or a cast master, but you can certainly cast it hard enough to get it out there. If you hook it any other way, it'll rip in half and just fall into the water. And that's something we do cover out on the beach. Uh -huh. The trick I've learned with surf fishing, we're fishing rubs. You want to fish a white rub or any uh, a water oil, and then pick a piece of a orange grub, the very tip, put it on the, put it on the tip of the white, white grub or any grub you're using, looks like eggs. Exactly, you're right.
That's exactly what it looks like. It looks like the eggs of a sand crab. Mm -hmm. And when my dad was a kid in the 30s, they used the same setup, but they didn't have like grubs back then because they didn't have plastic back in the 1930s. But they would use orange yarn mm -hmm. and they would wrap it on the hook and use it the same, same exact way. Any other questions about the rigging at all? What's, oh, so you oh, oh, go ahead. Go What's ahead. the shortest, when you say downsize the leader, what would be the shortest leader? I would go as short as eight inches. Eight. Okay. If I was fishing near rocks, let's say you were a rock. <laughs> now you've caught a lot of fish and I've seen your pictures, so you're probably more like a reef. But let's just say <laughs> <that you're not. laughs> If I was fishing from the rocks. Two reefs. Two reefs. Two, two, yeah, yeah, finger reef. Yeah. Um, coral reef. The Great Barrier. Exactly. 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 Um, when I was a kid, they built this jetty by my house in, in Redondo, the Sapphire Jetty. I hope I can hear tomorrow. And and this was the coolest jetty. And then at, when you went out to the end of the jetty and you looked way out the water, they had the barge out there, right? And my dad and my grandpa and uncle and stuff would go out and fish on the barge. So I thought, if I walk out on the end of this jetty, right, and I cast out as far as I can and let it sit, I'm going to catch a huge fish out there. So I'd go out there and I'd cast way out there, right? And I'd wait, just put in my sand spiker between the rocks and I'd wait and I'd wait and I'd wait and, and uh, nothing happened. And I'd, I'd go over reel it in because I must have lost my bait. And right before it got up out of the rocks, boom, I got a fish right there. So I pulled it up, I took the fish, I baited it, I like, took that thing, passed it out there as far as I could. <laughs> big splash, put it in. Oh man, I'm going to get that big fish. Fred got that Nako shark. <laughs> I'm going to get that fish. I'm going to beat Fred one of these days. And I wouldn't get a bite. So I thought, oh, well, that's lost my bait. I'd reel it in, and right before I'd get it in, it'd be right with a boom, I'd catch another fish. So I started diving, and that was how the ear, ear thing started out. And I went to Hawaii and Brazil, and I dove in Italy, and, and in France, and I dove uh, in England, and, and um, gosh, California, Mexico, uh, I went to Belize, I went to Guatemala. I've been all over the world diving and fishing. And what I found was that Every place you went where there were rocks, fish, no matter what language they spoke, they all had the same behavior. Big fish do the same thing around rocks. They all back in between rocks. They don't sit on the outside of rocks and wait for food to come off or swim around the outside. They back in between rocks. And when the wave crashes over a rock and washes off crabs or limpets or whatever it's on, they come out in the bubbles for a couple seconds and they go right back into the rocks again. So if I'm fishing near the rocks, I'm going to use a very short leader. I'm going to use seven or eight inch leader and an eighth ounce sliding sinker, super light. So your question on the leader is the shortest I've ever used is about eight ounces, and that's when I'm fishing near the rocks. And if I'm standing on a jetty, and this crack here, which was here the last time I was here, that's good, it hasn't gotten bigger. <laughs> um, if, if that was the edge of the water in the rocks there, I would throw my line maybe about a foot past that and allow the water, the wave action, to wash my bait in and out of those rocks and be tight to my sinker at all times. And the second I feel a pull in my rod, there's no nibble with those big fish in the surf. They don't go nibble, nibble, nibble. They just do this. Because they're on the way to somewhere. You know, either they're getting chased or they're chasing and they're on the way to somewhere. They will pick it up, and as soon as you get bit, you need to reel down and lift up, where that thing will back right back into the rocks. So when you're near the rocks, or the surf is big, really short leader, as much as eight inches. And the reason, and you think about like, well, it's not stealth, you know, I'm not gonna get a big fish, it's not stealth. When the water is moving that much, the fish are on like a super highway of water, right? And they're just having a reaction bite. When they go by that ghost shrimp or that worm that they see, boom, they just jump out and get it, just like it's in the bubbles, and they're coming after it. Uh, questions back there? Do you uh, use uh, you know bait, or would you use like lures, like sandworms, simple sandworms? What do you prefer? I prefer to use bait, um, live bait, versus like a Lucky Craft or Rapallo or a Castmaster or a Crocodile. Doesn't mean I don't use all of those. What about like the, the like the simple sandworms? Sandworm, you, you mean like a gold sandworm? Like gold sandworm. I'm going to talk a little bit about those. Um, I prefer to use gulp sandworms to find the fish, and then once I do, I'll have some live bait with me, I'll put one on, I'll take off this gulp worm, put a live bait on and cast it into that same area. Live bait as, as what? Like sand as in crabs sand crabs, um, clams, mussels, sand crabs, ghost yeah. shrimp, leg worms, mm -hmm. blood worms, opali moss, innkeeper worms, 
um, all just about anything we can find in the marine you environment. Or you go to a, uh, uh, to a shop and buy them for a I find I find almost all of these, with the exception of of bloodworms, although I do know a place where I can get those, or a worm that's similar to those, um, in the natural environment. But worms like a lugworm or a bloodworm, I'm going to buy those. But all the others I catch. And many of those can be caught in the Santa Ana River, of all places. Um, but there's a lot of different places. Like every harbor environment, Newport Harbor, King Harbor, um, Huntington Harbor, and then any estuary environment, Bolsa Chica, um, Santa Ana River, they all have bait in it. It's w whether you're willing to take the time to go down and get it or not. If you look at all the state records, with the exception of one record, which was made last year, they were all caught on natural baits. So why would I use a lure? I'm here to catch the biggest fish. I'm disappointed if I don't get a flag. Okay? I, I want to catch the big fish, so, so I'm going to use live bait. And normally when I go fishing at the beach, I don't take one bait with me or, or two baits with me. I'll take four or five different baits with me. Because yesterday might be the day when goat shrimp, everybody was biting goat shrimp. And today's the day that worm shrimp. So you're gonna have to go out there with some sort of contraption, dig in the sand, collect them, no. separate them, put them in jars. You make it sound so difficult. <laughs> it's, it's not that hard. I mean, it's not like going through the drive-through at In-N-Out, of course. You know. There is, there is a goat shrimp pump.